Chris Gazdick, welcome to the studio, man. Hey, good evening, Craig Graves. How are you, man? I'm a little tired. Oh, boy. Yeah. I might have you beat, but that's all right. We don't I'm need to compete. To get the show on the road, man. Part two is what we've got tonight, I believe, right? Yes. All right. We welcome you guys to another edition of Through a Therapist Eyes, where we invite you to see the lens through a real mental health and substance abuse therapist, right? It's all by memory. I don't even have a sheet in front of me. You proud of me? Yeah, I think your tacit learning has kicked in. Ah, And you're remembering the script without having notes. We do remind you it's not a therapy service in any way. And we do look for feedback and discussion. Really, guys, I know you're in your cars, listen to this on phones, walking around the mall with us. But uh, get online, man, through therapistsize.com. Check things out. Check it out. Talk to us and email us. We want to get more feedback Literally from around the world. We do have listeners all over the place, and we want to get more of that going. So, uh, yeah, I was supposed to ask you what you remember about part two, because we're doing an intro to part two of uh, Dr. Ted Spickler's conversation with us. Your eyes are wide. <laughs> I, remember that guy on Hogan's Heroes? No. Uh, Schultz the, with a guard? He would always say, I know nothing. Ah! I know nothing. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Nicely done. I just told Chris before we clicked record that uh, I didn't have a chance to go back and listen to the second part. So I'm not remembering a yeah. whole lot from that particular piece of well, the conversation. It's funny, too, because uh, I think you said in, in, in part in part one intro, you were kind of like, to be honest and genuine with the audience when we started talking about kind of the, uh, you remember when we got into the creation piece of tacit learning and the therapy component? And I yeah. was just, yeah, you got kind of lost, I think. You said, A little right? bit. I did. Yeah. I, uh, admittedly so, yeah. Yeah. yeah it, it was fascinating. And particularly, listen up all you therapists out there because uh, Dr. Spickler and I applied this to the therapy office. So you're, you're getting ready to hear part two of our conversation where we really looked at learning styles issues in the school and uh it kind of a a fascinating way of looking at how we learn through experience right and that's why i call therapy a therapy experience i like to say it that way because i've always kind of thought about it this way and not really realized i was thinking about it the way in which dr spickler highlights experiencing what you're experiencing to fully understand what you've got going on, and that happens in mental health. So part of what you'll hear is him and I really kind of going deep on figuring that out in a way that I don't think people typically talk about, really, even in my field. Interesting. How about we get to the show and we'll see him on the other end, huh? Let's do it. So we're back, Ted. You came (laughs) back with us. You're you're back with us to... uh... Where do we end up, Craig? What, what, do, what do you remember from last show, dude? Like, like get us fired up. I, I, think, I think I got him talking about robots or something to begin last time. What, what, what do you think? Yeah, we finished off with artificial intelligence, but we could talk about this topic for a long time. <laughs> well, well we, hey, we got all night, right? Right, uh, sir? Dr. Uh, Dr. Some, Spector, you're, you're some, here till 2 a.m., right? Uh, somebody has to go home and put their kids to bed or something, I think, as I recall. <laughs> <laughs> a, yes, the clock is running. <laughs> you have to watch that, huh? We might have, to have three, part three and part four. And there you go. There you go. So we'll have, that's right. We'll do that. We can do that. <laughs> Do you, were you, did you have thoughts there, Craig? On artificial intelligence, no. I think, it's, I think it's an interesting point. I have not heard anybody talk about artificial intelligence being limited by the fact that it doesn't have consciousness yet. And um, not that I'm an expert on the subject, but I've, some of the podcasts I mentioned, Joe Rogan and other, and other guys talk about artificial intelligence. I've heard Elon Musk discuss it. Right. And, um, but I've never heard anybody talk about it not not being conscious and that's that's a very interesting thing to me um what's interesting and they don't, and they don't know what consciousness is see they don't exactly. know what consciousness is uh, philosophers yeah. will tell you they don't know what it is and and the uh um uh, neuronal experts the neuronal the, the the neuron scientists they don't know what intelligence is they worry about it their books books filling up libraries uh they haven't gotten figured out but they never asked michael polanyi never asked him 
Yeah, that's where you come in that, that I yeah. think caught an interesting angle on this thing, man. Uh, yeah. By the way, uh, we need to talk about this book, uh, Gaining Insight Through Tacit Knowledge. Uh, yeah, right. uh, this guy has got it on there Amazon. Before we get really rocking and rolling here again tonight, where, where can they find this sucker? Well, you know what? Um, the interesting thing about Michael Polanyi's tacit theory of knowledge is that if you go into a big bookstore like uh, Barnes and Noble, it won't be there. Yeah. It won't be there because he wrote his seminal book back in 1958. And he, when he died in, in late 1975, he said, you know what? I'm, go I'm going to die and this is all going to die with me it's, it's, it's going to go. No, pe people don't know about it. They're not going to remember it. They're, going, they're not going to deal with it. And the reason is Michael Polanyi was a formal physical chemist. Physical chemists don't have the PhD in, bio, in, in, in philosophy. They don't have the PhD in psychology. They don't have a PhD in therapy. So you see, he was out of his, his league. He was out of his normal scope of what people have to be in order to make a contribution to something in psychology. And therefore, they don't listen. So his book gathers dust in libraries. Yeah, but no, I'm talking about how they're going to find yours. Well, in mine, it's a matter of going to Amazon.com, and you can toss in my name, and you can toss in tacit knowledge and they'll find it because there's Sweet. hardly there's nothing there's nothing practically nothing else there it's, this, it, no there really isn't and that's, no. that's what's funny about this and i guess we're going to break down the second half of part two on selfishly my therapy office because i want to learn yeah. more about that well sure yeah i guess we'll give it to the world and learn about the the teacher's classroom as well because i yes. think that we could take advantage of what you're talking about to help teachers and parents and then we have, don't, don't we have a lot of seven, eight-year-olds listening to the show, you think? Oh, I'm sure. We've we got to change our target audience, yeah. get them in. Yeah, they're all in there. <laughs> Teachers and parents, though, particularly on the, on the second half of the second half, because we don't teach, I believe, this is just Chris Gazzick's opinion, mm -hmm. we do not teach kids to learn. That's correct. We, 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 we just, and okay, I'm going to go on a rant, and I don't want to lose that. So let's really sum up, Craig, any questions or thoughts you have, uh, Ted, anything that you want to add in, in the basics understanding, and then let's go to uh, mental health applications. What do y'all think? Well, you know, you know I, I, the question I would have is, is can you use tacit knowledge to speed up the learning process? Probably not which is not what the answer you want to hear. But on the other hand, you can use tacit knowledge to improve understanding. Well, that's interesting too, though. Yeah. You see, the thing is, what, what do we do when we learn? Well, uh, you, you, you typically, you listen to the teacher talking. Maybe, uh, in fact, studies show that about 20 minutes is all that you can pay attention for very long before you know it. Your kind of mind is wandering. You get tired. You know, kids have been in school forever, and they're tired of sitting there and listening to somebody talk. Hopefully, there's activity. There's action going on other than just listening. And then there's a textbook, and they typically have to read the book. You go home, and you got to read uh, chapter A, and, and, and you, you read it. But, you know, what are, what are the students mostly thinking about? They're thinking about, can I pass the test? I want right. to pass the test, right? I want to pass the test. I'm going to take a test. How do I do that? Well, hey, teacher, what's on the test? <laughs> what's on the test? Tell me what's on the test. And, well, they, don't, they know better than that. They don't want to tell you exactly what's on the test because then you're not really finding out what they understand. Instead, you're finding out what they have memorized. And memorizing is not the same thing as understanding something. Their goal is not to understand. Their goal is to pass the test. Now, this is a big miss. This is a big disconnect in education. So in order to understand something, you want the tacit knowledge. You want to say that I've got the understanding in my tacit knowledge that's where it belongs 
if the understanding is at the level of tacit knowledge, then I don't have to consciously think that hard. I know it. I've got it. And then you can throw things at me on a test and I'll figure it out. That's the ideal. When I, when I was teaching physics, I would write questions on the test that would start from fairly straightforward that people get started and yeah i can solve this problem yeah i know how to solve that problem and by the end you are finding out who the a students are you've got to be able to solve something you've never seen before oh i would not like you as a professor see and Pete, <laughs> the students would say this is cheating you're <laughs> cheating i'm I, we didn't learn that. Oh, oh yes, you did. Right. If you have a tacit understanding of this particular topic, you can figure it out. And huh, the A so students, cool. the A students figure it out. Wow. How many people get an A in that class? Maybe about 10%. And then you've got another 20% who get Bs. And then the C students never really got there, but they memorized enough to get by. See, so the, the design of test questions has to match what you're trying to find out what they can not only understand. Sort of the concepts and the, the schema con the, and the understanding. Yeah, you, yeah. you got to know the schema. It's got to be a part of you so you can then apply it to a question that they've never seen before. Wow. <laughs> and they so, answer it. They answer it. The good ones answer it. So would you say that like in, anybody could get tacit knowledge in, in any subject? Because earlier we talked about in the last episode about somebody saying I'm not good at math. And that's what I would have said at one point because the only, the only class I ever flunked in high school was uh, advanced math and trigonometry. Yeah, and you? so I would, I would always say, and I've changed my thinking now, and I would always say, oh, I'm just not good at math. No, I, you know, I think now if I actually spent some time to you, understand that I yeah, could get it. You, you apply know? yourself. You work to get that tacit understanding. And the problem in school is the clock is not your friend. The yeah. clock is in your way. Because right. there is nothing that says that you will understand this particular thing in X minutes or X hours. And you're expected in school to follow the clock and do what it says. And that doesn't work. So That's so fascinating. I so I might... So I might take, we talked about patience. We used the word yeah. patience. I'm going to patience. last episode of this one. Right. But if I have the patience, you know, yeah. Chris, may, Chris may figure out the trigonometry a lot quicker than me. But if I'm patient and stick with it, I'm going to figure it out eventually. You're going to figure it too. You're going to get it also. Now, I have to say that if you go back and take a look at some people who are mentally truly deficient, people who are at the lower end of the scale when you're measuring anything like IQ, they may not be able to get it. You're talking people who are measured in the 50s or the 60s. Right. Right. You know, I was thinking about autism and, and sensory well, learning yeah. disorders, and I was exactly. going to ask you about that stuff. Not yeah. everybody can, you know, and, and we do a disservice. You know what the disservice we do? You can be anything you want to be. Mm. not true it's not true you wow. cannot be yeah. anything you want to be but you can prob you can probably manage just about what normally is done in school at a reasonable rate and you can also learn algebra <clears throat> you can learn trigonometry even though you had a bitter bitter experience with trigonometry and i did too i didn't i, I never I, took it I did too. I, I never was, did. No. So, uh, but it's a matter of being willing to slog through it, be willing to give your brain a chance to do the exercises, to do the learning, and to get help, whatever, anything that you can do to imp bring in the information. You got to be immersed, immersion, immersion, incubation. Let that subconscious mind work on it. Aha, you're on your way. Now, so it, we're we're covering the school thing, yeah. And I, I'm just, I guess I'll go back to you. You have another thought, Craig. We're gonna fire this guy <laughs> yeah, off. Yeah, I did have another question, thought. I'm question. gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna hijack Chris's show. He, he wants to hide himself, and I'm just, I'm just fascinated by the whole thing and not going there at all. So we're in the school part. You're not a a a, 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 a um, proponent of standardized tests and timed standardized tests and stuff. I mean, that's what well, we do so much yeah. of. 
we overwhelm the system with so much testing. And you have to be really careful about testing because standard, I, I mean, there, people can write good tests. You can write good tests. You can find out what people understand. But if you overwhelm them with so many tests, you're going to distract attention to how do you teach to the test. And there's, you know, some teachers will do that. Administrative systems in schools might, might judge your ability based on the performance of students. Well, now the students are a wide range. You've got some, some years you've got a good class. Some years you don't have a good class. But the administrations don't take that into account adequately. So that's not fair, you know. What you got, Craig? I was, I was just going to say, I was going to ask you about visualization. So, like, how, you know, how does visualization play into tacit knowledge? It's very, very important. Very important, particularly if you're working on something that is inherently three dimensional. So, for example, John Fitch, in his mind, had to be able to see the picture of the mechanism that drove those rows, the, the, the oars. So he had to visualize that. He saw a picture. He saw a three-dimensional picture. Some problems are solved through three-dimensional pictures. Others are not. That might not be a three-dimensional picture. It depends on the nature of the problem. The problem might have something to do with just uh, words, word games. You know, I'm lousy at word games. <laughs> I, 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 you know, I, I'll watch. Um, Can we play words I, with friends then? Je- I, need, Je- I need an ego boost. <laughs> yeah, word like Jeopardy. Watch Jeopardy. They give you questions about uh, all kinds of things. I haven't come up with the answer until after all the buzzers are buzzed and everybody has written down their answer. Then I'm starting to think about it. Then it's starting to come to me. Same. Something, you know, here's something else that I'm lousy at. I was lousy at foreign languages. Oh, gosh. Yeah, impossible. Lousy at. Now, that doesn't mean that I can't become good at foreign languages. You know, I know better than that. I know that I would have to apply myself. I have to work hard. I have to want to learn the foreign language. If my, my brain told my subconscious, I don't want to learn this. I don't like this. I hate this. And the subconscious shuts down. Okay, I'm not going to help you. See, bad messages. We give ourselves bad messages all the time about that. Is, is this what we, what we mean? So we're clearly in the school section now instead of yeah. my coveted mental health, but that's okay. <laughs> you can always slip into mental health anytime you want. Learning styles, right? Like, what are... I think I'm just going to say, like, I think I have an idea uh, of it and whatnot, but I'm just going to say, what are the different learning styles for students? Well, of course, you'll see some different kind of research coming out on this. I mean, some people right. will claim to have a learning style that's more tuned into verbal. I, you know, your ears pick up on a lot of verbal stuff, and they are more likely to understand or hear something that's delivered verbally. Other people would say, I'm more involved in visualization, seeing things, three-dimensional. I, I, you would rather like to work with live models and put stuff together. And then there are people who are very kinesthetic. And so when you are running around um, outside in, in, uh, at, at recess, you're more likely to learn something because you're exercising your muscles and you're very physical. So somebody who's very physical might be very good at playing uh, uh, soccer or baseball, something like I never was. Uh, But on the other hand, you have to be careful because you can think that different people just have a certain learning style and nothing else. And that's not, that's not really the case. Do we have strengths, though? I mean, there's tactile learning and yeah, visual learning. Like you yeah, said. You're, you may have a natural strength in one area, but the, my, recommend, my recommendation is you want to encourage the development of the other strengths. The more, Why? Well, because different kinds of problems are going to be better served with different kinds of applied strengths. So if you're, if you're focused primarily on one kind of learning style 
and you push that really hard, sure, you might end up being really good at playing baseball. But what happens when you're trying to learn algebra? You might be left out a bit. So develop the other learning styles. Don't ignore them. Develop them. Just do what you can to strengthen those other learning styles, and you will have more tools to work with. It's tools that you're working yeah, with. Yeah, you know, I, 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 I never did put my quote out there. Uh, my quote was, fight, fight, fight to gain insight, is what, what came to me with this. Absolutely. And yeah, what is it, the fight, fight, fight? It is immersion, immersion. Exactly. You've got to immerse, gather information, gather information, immerse yourself repeatedly, but at the same time, take a break. Take a take break, break. self-care, self-care in the mental health field. Yeah, but you know, the point I was wanting to make with that and really sort of maybe not make, but, but highlight part of what I hear you saying and, and you know, in, in, in being purposeful about it, I, I think that people feel hopeless a lot of times yeah. about learning and learning about themselves and their emotions. I mean, it's overwhelming. There's so much to do. There's, you know, in a classroom, I guess we'll stay in a classroom for a couple more minutes. You know, how am I ever going to do this whole big picture thing? Can, can you help people with the hopefulness, the uh, enlightened perspective of, of being able to stay persistent and, 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 and accomplish it, seeing it all the way through? Yeah, see, that is so hard to do because you, it's not too useful to just to tell somebody. They're going to have to feel it. And so the best thing is to, is to experience something that they were successful at. Experience something that took a lot of work. Now, for example, we have um, uh, in, in, in schools, we have band. And Adrian on, and will tell you about the value of learning an instrument and playing in the band. And the band director was very good at pointing out, you're working hard to do this. Notice how you have to practice. You're working hard. Working hard is good for you. Working hard ultimately means you get ahead. You become better at what you're doing. Notice how you started off at the beginning of the year. You couldn't play an instrument very well. You got all mixed up. Things didn't work well. But the, eventually, you're in a band, and you're marching at halftime, and you're successful. So if you can have at least some experience of that and then relate to, uh-oh, now I've got to learn algebra. Oh, gosh. Hmm. Well, hey, the same thing is true for band as is true for algebra. Practice, practice, practice. You've got to practice, practice. You've got to stick to it. You've got to realize that although you don't understand something right now, maybe you will in a couple of days if you keep at it. So what, what would you tell teachers, what would you tell parents as teaching their children, both emotionally and with homework and whatnot? How can homework, we help yeah. these little guys out best? I know that's really super broad, but. Well, you know, uh, you, if they understand, this is something that many teachers might not realize, that we're trying to develop tacit knowledge trying to develop tacit knowledge. You want the knowledge to be in the tacit form, which means it's built into the brain. The brain has learned how to do this. The mind, the body, it's all one whole thing. It's learned how to do it, which means you know it better. You understand more. You're going to be better. You're going to be more successful at taking a test. You're going to move forward through the system more successfully instead of just Memorizing for the test. Memorizing for the test is what the kids want to do. They just yeah. want to memorize. They want to get out of here. And, and it's the hardest thing. Teach, uh, parents are accustomed to saying, do your homework. Have you done your homework? Yeah, I did my homework, which mm -hmm. meant I got through it as fast as I could so I could then do something else, which I want to do. Well, right. that's, not, that's, no, that's not the idea. And again, uh, the teacher will will deal with the students asking, what's on the test? What's on the test? Do I have to know this on the test? And, and that is a limited way of looking at it. The kids want that answer. They want the shortcut. The fact is, you don't have a shortcut. Tacit knowledge and developing of tacit knowledge is not a shortcut. It's the long cut 
to finally really understanding something. The, the comprehension is all about really understanding it and not taking a shortcut and pretending to know. How many times in school did you pretend to know? Teacher asks a question, yep, 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 yep. Oh, I know that, yep. <laughs> yep. You know, don't, don't call on me. Don't call on me. Yep, yep, I know that. Yep. No, how, how, no, does that how does that work with oh, – I'm sorry, Craig. You, you want to go? Well, I was, I was just going to say, you know, how much – and I guess it's an obvious question, but you have to be interested in the, in the subject to, to develop this real tacit knowledge, right? I mean, who wants to learn algebra? I mean, who really wants to – there's there's a handful of people. There's a few people out there. There are. Right? I mean, I'm not knocking people who, who want to know. Five I'm in the country. Too, but, but, you know, one of the reasons why I stunk at advanced math and trigonometry I'm sure is because I just, I just didn't like it. Didn't like it. Didn't want to. I didn't well, care to know, know about it. <laughs> there are ways of teaching it and better ways of teaching it. Now, for example, there's a, there's a guy on the web right now who has online algebra trig classes. And he calls himself Better Explained. Huh. Better Explained. If you go to that site, betterexplained.com, you put that on our show notes, Craig. Name. You'll yeah. be amazed at how interesting this is because he teaches the material in a very uh, visualizable way, and he knows how to put things in perspective so that you're more likely to gain that tacit knowledge. You're more likely to. Uh, I, I'm fascinated in the way he systematically helps you in the direction that you will gain tacit knowledge. Okay, I would be remiss if, I, if, we, if we got out of this, uh, this education component in, in schools and, and learning with kids and parents teaching their kids or teachers teaching their kids. If I if I didn't kind of go off on, on, a, on a resentment that I have, yeah. frankly, with, with the systems that, that are in place, you know, Ted, I, I have people in my office that just break my heart with, you know, learning disabilities that, yes. that, are, that, are, that are just real. And, and, and the yeah. mental health implications of kids that have, you know, dyslexia and, oh, and dysgraphia yes. and, and you know, it really even the ADD and, and, and the focusing issues right. that we see. And right. I mean, all of that is just, it is just not addressed. It feels like. It needs, yeah. There, there, are, there are knowledgeable people who have worked on that. How many of them are in a local school system? Yeah, like I know, right? I'll give you an example, personal example. Uh, we, we have a school system that initially did not take a grandchild they recognized that first grade no nope, we're not going to take this kid you can't he, he's got uh, too many issues and we just can't you handle your grandchild him. yeah this is a grandchild there are too many issues this is Ooh. you don't know who this is i'll tell you we probably don't know who this is so don't worry about it uh and and so the mother well all i need to know to be mad is that it's your grandson <laughs> yeah well see there you go so the mother had to homeschool this kid because it, 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 she didn't have any other choice, really. And she did, and she was successful at it. Then something, a miracle happened. The state came up with some money to put into place a special program for autistic children. They had a special classroom. They had a special trained person. They did all kinds of things that made a huge difference. And by the time this child went through the, the, the uh, grades, one grade after the other after another, by the time they got, he got to the 11th grade, he was just incredibly better off than he was near the beginning because it was the proper kind of education, the proper care. Knowledgeable people knew what to do, knew how to handle it. And so... If you have the right people who know the nature of the problem and can address the problem right away, day, day to day, minute to minute, he might be in a classroom and all of a sudden something goes wrong and he's got to be pulled out of there and he's got to be helped. That was provided and it, make, and it was a huge help. So listen, Mr. 
Ted, Dr. Spickler. We need you come out of retirement, march your little <laughs> happy butt up to Washington, D.C., get in these people's ears. Please help them understand that these clients of mine and people, probably myself, there to are, yeah, there you know, are, yeah, there are solutions. There are people who know how to deal with this, but it takes a lot of money. Money. Mm. And in fact, this program no longer exists at that school. Yeah, see, it just, it doesn't, it, it, it stopped because the money dried up. And, and it's very frustrating. Because I see these kids, you know, in, in, my, in my office and, I'm, and dude, right. I'm, I'm treating depression and I'm treating yeah. anxiety and I'm seeing these kids just, yeah. you know, lose their self-view, their self-talk yeah. goes in the tank. It's, oh, it's yeah. so, it is frustrating because it's it, very because frustrating. It hurts kids. And you've got some issues that have to do with their brain chemistry. Yeah. And, and you can talk to them all you can. Maybe you'll have some difference for some of them, but you won't make that much of a difference if it's more than, than uh, a, a, a talking type of therapy. It's, it's hard. It's hard. And we need money to go into the system. Okay. Can we talk about therapy? Sure. <laughs> you need help? help? You and need substance help. Abuse, oh, I need a lot of help. Right? Need <laughs> help. <laughs> we, we'll talk. We'll talk for another part three on on that. How do we want to launch into what I see in my therapy office with mental health applications? Uh, is is kind of what I wonder out loud because there's there's there there really are. I mean, I, I forget where I saw it in my my show prep. Ted, but you, you, you had put somewhere, it might even have been in the email that you sent to me. I, I don't know that uh, I, I really kind of feel like the applications of, of this tacit knowledge in the mental health and, and, and psychology field, if you will, is just way underwhelmed. Like, I, I know we do hypnosis and the psychologist probably more than any of our disciplines have really kind of looked at sort of this closer with consciousness and subconsciousness, and they've done a lot of studies on all those types of things. But, but I don't know that that's really behavior change and life course change, emotional development, which to me seems to require tacitly learning. Yeah, I think What do you that, think? I think the angle... Your, the cognitive therapy is probably where you would find the closest approach for the use of tacit knowledge. The cognitive is very mental. Uh, the cognitive has a lot to do with what you believe to be true and the structures, the schema that you have in your head. And uh, the the, the issue is how would you use tacit knowledge to change the behavior, change the belief? And you have to go back and ask, well, what are the steps? You've got to be immersed, immersion. Well, what are you immersing? What are you immersed in? Uh, you would probably have to be immersed in some basic ideas behind what you need to believe to be true. Yeah, and I think there's a lot of experience in that. Honestly, yeah, you know, experiential. It, when you're when you're in an emotional state, that there there's a lot going on, and and it isn't it, it isn't as simple as just tell me the events of the matter. Yeah. I, yeah. You know, you know, yeah. I have I have a uh, I have a uh, psych. Uh, what are they called? Jeez, my brain's getting tired to think. Um, Medical practitioners, PAs. What's a PA stand yeah. for? Physician assistants. Jeez. Physician assistants. <clears throat> okay, yeah. I have physician assistants that come do rotations with me, and I enjoy working with them. And it was funny because, you know, their, their medical knowledge, you know, needs I, to and mixes in my placement and rotation with the mental health and the emotional knowledge. And right. I'll never forget, one person asked me, she's like, you know, Chris, I'm not sure. Like, you know, I kind of expected, I haven't heard you ask this question. How do you feel? very often <laughs> and, I, and yeah. I never really realized that but in looking back into it that I'm, I'm asking that question all the time, time. they, they just didn't recognize that it's how I'm asking in getting at through CBT and other methods like 
their story, man. What's yeah. your story and what are you experiencing and how can we experience it differently? Is that, yeah. is that tacitly? Yeah. Uh, yeah, you definitely changing? are heading in that direction. And the challenge is to offer enough information about do, do they know how they feel? Are they, ever, are they able to get in touch with that? And then what is it that links what they experience with this feeling how the 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 uh the schema the the idea that's in their head how do you get at that and and uh pull out the details for them to ex to to uh dwell on um so ted let's you know, create for a second let's let's get specific with this if we could yeah. Let's take let's take something like trauma. Craig, we've talked about trauma on the show. I think you learned a little bit about it or already knew some. So so we talked about elevated states. We talked about the amygdala that fires up. You get cortisol, yeah. cortisone, all this stuff just flows through your body. You're kind of thinking right. fast, moving fast. You know, how how do we point out what their experience is so that they could tacitly relearn, tacitly relearn how to manage that experience. What do, you, what do you think, with your extensive knowledge of tacit learning and tacit knowledge, actively changing all of those chemicals and all of that trauma work, right? What do you... What do you yeah, wow. Yeah, you see, create together here. we have to create together because you're moving this in a territory that I, don't, I have never seen the... Uh, concept of tacit knowledge applied to i know i just think that way it's crazy this is new territory yes this is, let's do you've it just you've jumped over the cliff and we're falling <laughs> we're that falling and scary, we'd like, <laughs> we would like to have a soft landing but it's going to be hard it's going to be hard to to get there well let's try yeah, yeah we can certainly try we know that that we've got to build We've got to build, we've got to put parts, pieces and parts have to go into the brain. We know that. And right. that means pieces and parts that would be a happier, better way of, of sensing the reality. What is the reality here? There's something, there's something about the reality that is of great concern. It's causing a lot of emotion. It's, they're, they're, they're in a, a, a bad state, in a bad place. and. To what degree is that emotional reaction due to a false reality, a reality that exactly, isn't true? Right? It's not true. The well, reality it, isn't true. Yeah. It's true for them. It's for their them experience, it's true. It's right? It's very so. real. Right. But if, you, if they could change that perception of reality. Yeah, we want to alter it and sort of work with it and mold it into, right. into a mold sort of a newer experience that's yeah. less dramatic, right? Exactly. Now, the question is, how do you do that? Do you do it by having them visualize or imagine a different reality? Yes. Uh, and I then, think and so. Yeah, and then that would require them to have something to, to uh, grab a hold of. The pieces of that reality have to be put together. And so you would have to find pieces of that reality somewhere else. It's like, it's like I'm going to grab off the shelf this piece of the reality, which would be nice to have, and then another shelf, this piece of the reality, let's put that in here too. Uh, because it's the pieces that are piled up that then form the complete reality that's the improved way of looking at it. Exactly. So like, yeah. you know, in Gestalt work with uh, yeah. experientially based practices in, right. in the therapy or mental health world, right? Where we'll actually break things out. I mean, yeah. I don't do it too often because it freaks my clients out, but you know, taking, taking a, a part of yourself and sort of imaginarily putting it in a chair and then, and then putting another part of yourself yeah. in another chair, right? Yeah. And we're having this conversation, conversation. Uh, uh -huh. and, and building a, a new, like you say, pieces of what you're experiencing. And then you put your attention to that experience that you're having now. And we kind of, you know, in therapy world, we build up with that. I just don't think that we've known that it's, that it's basically playing with, with, with tacit knowledge. Yeah, that could, you, you may well be, and are just not aware of it as being that kind of a thing. The, 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 um, the problem is you have to replace dysfunctional pieces with something that's, which is a, an improvement. 
And, and, so and we, yeah. we, well, yeah, I think we do that by, like, I, I was just thinking, uh, Dale Earnhardt Jr. I, I saw him on a, on a video and he was, uh, you know, he, I, I, you know, I love racing. I love the Earnhardt story. Um, well, I should say I used to love racing, Craig, man. Oh, that's so sad. Anyway, um, he wrote a letter and he read it on this program that I, that I happened to catch with him. And it's, you know, he was asked to write a letter to his younger self. Dude, it was powerful. Yeah. And yeah. we know that when we do those things in a therapy environment, you know, to, like, to, we'll, we'll take a, a letter and uh, sometimes you'll write it with your non-dominant hand, uh, right? Okay. And, you, and you do things like that to, to, to create new experiences with your adult brain, maybe in your, uh, in your immediate focus learning, as, as you put it together. Right. Mm -hmm. but, but then switch it over into combating something that you get, like, with trauma. Does that, right. does that sound a little bit of the how? Yeah. I mean, I, I think hearing? that, yeah. I think that the... That, that you're, 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 you're probably doing a lot more with tacit knowledge than you would be, oh, you would recognize without looking at it that way. And um, the important thing is that the tacit knowledge is structured, is put together with real stuff. It's got to be real. It can't be imaginary. It can't be false. It has to be real. Because you can put together, your brain can put together a tacit integration that turns out to be wrong. Just because the brain is doing this doesn't mean the brain is magically always correct. We definitely have feelings and beliefs that are developed that yep. I call them. Well, we, Craig, didn't we just do a show on, uh, what, what was it? Emotions lie to us, right? Yeah. That's what, that's what you're t he's talking about, I think. Right. They, 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 they can build up and, 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 and go into a totally different direction right. than what we want them to. And I guess I right. go back to in part one or earlier today or whatever it was um, when you, when you were talking about, you know, directing your brain. Right. Right. Mm -hmm. You can direct your brain. You can ask for help. You can ask for a tacit integration. You want to solve this problem. You might go, aha. And then you find out that, Oh, that doesn't work. Huh. That's not a good idea. It doesn't work. You, you have to evaluate what has been offered to you in, a, in, in an aha moment or that gradually appears to you. Evaluate it. Check it out. Make sure that, yeah, okay, this works, but maybe it doesn't work. And if it doesn't, don't beat up your brain. You know, you don't want to tell, hey, you stupid, idiotic, subconscious mind. Right. You have, you have screwed up. You've screwed me up. So I don't want to hear from you anymore. Oh, oh that's bad. Don't. No, oh, no, no, no. Be kind. Be kind and gentle to your subconscious mind. It's part of you. And it'll work better if you are. I it'll presume. work better if you are. And then you say, hey, this is the problem with your idea. Let's go back and try this again. Says your subconscious brain. Yeah. Yeah. Take subconscious mind. The problem is is that this doesn't fit quite right, and it sends me off into a wrong corner. So uh, got to go back to the drawing board, work on this some more. Okay, I think that we, 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 we got to create a little bit with, with this in, in, in the example of trauma and whatnot, but I think, um, oh man, I just kind of lost my train of thought. Um, you need to work on this because you're the expert in this kind of field, and you need <sighs> to take a look at how you're going to be able to link up the therapy problem and people's schemas and the wrong the ways that they imagine things that aren't helpful to them and then how do you bring the tacit knowledge in to to improve it oh, i agree i think i think people that are smarter than me by far have kind of done this and i think that but some of it is <clears throat> just pulling our um pulling our worlds together you know yeah. uh, we, we had a few guests on our show that are from different disciplines and right. and it's you know we tend to get you know pigeonholed into our oh, own yeah. little space right. and sure. and that's one of the reasons why i love this platform because we can pull them together and improve yes. both spaces right absolutely you know? absolutely yeah so let, so on this uh this this area let me let me go with the kind of different directions and i lost my train of thought on the other thing what, what happens with tacit learning and, and these sensory issues we we had uh uh, somewhat recently, a, a lady that was talking about sensory processing disorders. Have you, have you ever heard of that? I'm not familiar with it. Okay, um, so, like a, so let me know. Yeah, yeah the, these are these are um, 
we'll call it kind of a set of conditions where wherein basically uh, <clears throat> the body processes and uses their sensory experience in a, in a way over elevated way. So it's like, you know, they're hearing, you know, just nails on a chalkboard and, and it's just um. killing their ears and they, they cannot receive auditory information but yet you and i hear music and soothing uh, stuff that might be a little wow. bit louder but see their bodies are banging oh wow so oh. sensory sensory defensiveness and sensory issues i would suppose create a great problem in trying to create this uh tacit integration i, I think it would absolutely it would be an interference your 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 uh your input systems aren't working right Right, basically, and, yeah, yeah but the input system, and, and you see, tacit knowledge requires information coming in from all the senses, and if it's screwing up, oh man, that's that's rough. I I that would be hard. Okay, so that's that a real limit. You see, there. it's a limit. I you know you know yeah. Greg, uh, you were talking about limits before. Those are real, and and, and we all have sensory experiences. Oh right? yeah. Right. I told and, I told Craig on the show or, uh, that night like I have a very big sensitivity behind the back of my tooth, right? So whenever I whenever I drink water or anything really cold, I'll put my tongue on the back of my tooth right there in the to front protect it. and to protect Stop it. it. That protects right? it. Right. <laughs> so uh, we I've, I've learned workarounds. We right. all have little sensitivities like that, but Around. but there's a continuum. People that have great levels of distress with this probably are going to struggle in learning. Whereas people that have very limited distress with this, it's going to be easier to learn. See, Does that sound an, true? There's an analogy there with education. And the analogy is there are all kinds of educational uh, beliefs. And people will get caught up in one of them. And then they'll go whole hog it in that particular area. They'll, they'll say... Uh, uh, well, I know how best to teach such and such, and but actually, where you you really want to have the whole, all the different types of of of, um, of of learning styles. You know, you want all the types. You don't want to pick one. You don't want to emphasize one to the degree that the others are ignored. And the same thing holds true if you're uh, interested in constructivism or you're interested in all those other isms of education, behaviorism. There's all these isms in education. And right there on my sheet for next question, buddy. Yeah. <laughs> and and they, go, they go from uh, the, the educators will push one of these, and that suddenly becomes the answer to education. And yeah. then, then the administration jumps all over it. And now everybody has to, to get training in this particular ism, and the school <laughs> is going to do this ism <laughs> uh, for a couple of years, and then gradually they discover that it doesn't always work. And for each the, individual, yeah, kid. teachers are different. And so, so for example, it would hmm. be a mistake to take a look at tacit knowledge. Okay, we've just gone through tacit knowledge, and that's the answer to everything. No. We are right. not going to say that any particular thing is the answer to everything. It's not. It's an answer, and it helps us understand certain things, but not everything. Don't even expect to see that. So it's interesting to try to apply tacit knowledge to the uh, uh, problem of people who have sensory issues, but it might not work. It might be the wrong thing. and. You know, behaviorism as an educational fad ended up pushing people to forget the mind, to not even look inside the brain. We, you know, you can't measure it, so don't go there. Yeah, well, that's, a right, right. that's a mistake. That's a mistake. Don't do that. But on the other hand, behaviorism does have some valid techniques in applying to certain kinds of disabilities. So use it where it applies. And don't worry about it where it doesn't. Well, I, I could keep on going with the mental health thing because you're right. I, constructivism therapy and, and usually storytelling is something I kind of want to 
ask about and, and, and ask them about um, worldview and how that's developed tacitly in a bigger macro level, um, staying in the meaning of the story. And then we talked a little bit about, I was challenging you for you and I to create together, like changing your story in the meaning. I mean, there's, there's lots of applications. I, I think that uh, I want to encourage our listening audience to to really, you know what, create with us. Because I think some yeah. in the mental health field and arena, honestly, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a different concept. And, and in, the, in the education field, you know, it's, it's, a, it's, a, it's a little, I feel like, it's a little used, um, it's, it's not used enough resource right. in, in, right. Our, in our teaching worlds. That's Craig, what, you had questions from before and, and we're, we're wrapping up. I want, want to give you, make sure you, you have all the time and what you were thinking about with there. And, and, and Ted, I you know, really want to say thank you, first of all. Thank you again. But, the, but your, your willingness to talk with us about all these things is, um, is really cool. And I, and, I, and I think the audience is really going to get a lot out of it. Um, as it relates yeah. to the classroom, as it relates to the, to the therapy room, as it relates to Craig, your learning and your brain. What are we all thinking in way of summarizing things up? Crickets? Don't everybody speak at once. How does that happen? That never yeah. happens. Did you, lose your, <laughs> did you lose the thought that you were thinking before? No, I really, I really, everything that I had questions about, I think we covered when you guys went down the, uh, the, path, the path on therapy. I, I, I don't think I have any feedback there at all. Right. Okay. Well, Ted, heck, we can create more if we want to. <laughs> Let's get back to what we were talking about, it. storytelling and constructivism therapy and, you know, different things about that. But, uh, no, I mean, what are, you, what are you thinking that would be good summary points for people that you really want them to know about that, that shine through loudest in your book or in your well, knowledge yeah, in our yeah, conversation? It, it's interesting that the book, because I have a background in educational psychology, does focus more on education than other aspects and other uh, applications of tacit knowledge. I've had some people who were not teachers who found that a little off-putting because um, they're not teaching, they don't teach. And so it wasn't that interesting to them to have to go into that angle, but it's in the book. And uh, it's also the case that some people who do not do any teaching at all look at it and wonder, well, now what's, what does that have to do to, for me? And it has to do with your own learning. We do try to learn things as time goes on. I mean, I, I would hope that even though, for example, I'm retired, you can tell from my white hair, and I'm still learning. I'm still interested in learning. Exactly, things. yeah, yeah. And, and so I try to pay attention to what I need to do and it's, it's hard. I'm trying to learn a couple of things that are hard to do. And I know that I'm supposed to, to apply the immersion and then give my brain a chance to incubate and then continue that cycle. But the problem is my everyday life isn't conducive to doing that. There's so many things going on, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's hard to, it, it takes some discipline. You have to say, okay, I really want to learn uh, uh, what Bayesian statistics is all about. And in order to do that, though, I have to apply in some kind of a regular way. And if I l just get off of the wagon and do other things, pretty soon it's, it's gone. And I haven't, yeah. I haven't exercised the tacit knowledge cycle of learning. And so it takes some discipline to, to do that. Uh, Insert the concept of mindfulness, right? I mean, you know, oh, yeah. the mindfulness right. is experiencing what's in the moment right. and are fully allowing that process just to happen so that you get a grounded sense of what your brain is doing and your body is doing and allow that experience to come in. And I mean, I do guided imagery like that and describe a whole scene to calm people down and, and realize that they're incorporating all of that tacitly into the right. system to relax or to deal right. with the, the problem at hand. Yeah, right. Absolutely. <clears throat> and, you know, that, that starts to sound a little bit like uh, hypnotic, hypnotic regression oh, yeah. where, you, where you are allowing yourself to completely relax mm -hmm. and... Um, to step away from it. To step away from it. And some people do that very well and some people don't. Right. It's very, it's, that, that's a part of the of the mind that I find very fascinating.
acting, and yet I don't really know anything about it. I'm, I've not seen too many people who have a deep, deep explanation of how that works. Well, that's the thing, and that's where I see this, this, uh, this, this tacit integration idea yep. and this model and developing insight through that. Yeah, right. Because, you know, I don't think that we really get it. I mean, you, you, your, your conversation with the artificial intelligence that we ended up or started up with tonight or the started out. Show, mm-hmm. You know, that's, that's powerful stuff that I don't think has been really researched or really understood. Yeah. And, and I think it's super important because in multiple disciplines, therapy being one of them, I believe very much in a teaching model for all the therapists that are listening out there. Like, I really believe we, we, want, we need to teach our client, teach our patients in the medical field, if you will, teach our students, of course, in school, a teaching model is so important because people want to learn, but that's not right. just facts. It's that right. learning. Not facts. It's no, not, it's not facts at all. You, you, need, you need to immerse yourself in facts so long as they are related to some deeper understanding that you're trying to acquire. And, uh, but, but just collecting uh, uh, those facts and just uh, sticking them in your head uh, is limited in its value. Yeah, I feel like learning to- and allowing is, is something that comes to my mind, you know, a client to, to, to fully benefit, by the way, just for all the general public. It, it occurs to me in real time here to, to, to fully benefit from a therapy experience. I would submit that you have to, to, to learn and allow. So you yeah. have to listen and allow, right? Allow yes. that stuff to come in. Allow your experience allow your emotion to come up you know how many people just prevent that and you know suffocate that and compartmentalize the crap well, you, out of our emotions yeah you don't want to experience something that is hard or nasty or un unpleasant right you don't want to do that you don't want to go there and students right. don't want to learn the algebra it's too hard i don't want to do that in fact they're expecting to fail or They're remember that trauma or deal yeah, with those right. hurts and hang-ups and oh, go yeah. that divorce again. Oh, my God, yes, yes. Right. But if you don't plunge in, what chance is there for change? Growth. Growth. Change. Yep, right. Growth mm-hmm. and change and development and learning. And, and it's, it's all the same thing, yeah. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, that's cool, man. Craig, I, Ted, I, I'm, I hate it, but I think we've got to kind of wrap up and, and, and be getting, getting out of here. Yep. Um, any closing thoughts, Craig, or questions and, and such? No, I just want to reiterate uh, Dr. Spickler's book, Gaining Insight Through Tacit Knowledge on Amazon.com. Is right. there any place else? So do you have any kind of social media or newsletter? Well, you know, I have, an, I have a sleeping website. It's called tacitknowledge.org. Would you but say a I sleeping website? Sound asleep. I'm still <laughs> there. It's there, but I haven't added anything to it for a long time because I've been very, very busy trying to uh, work on the problem of climate change. So uh, I've, I've, I've just been distracted. You've, you've brought me back home again. See, All it's, right. you brought me yes. back home. And, and, uh, but, but yeah, it, it's there. It's got some interesting, some things to it. It's got some re- references, but other than that, uh, tacitknowledge.org try and it and you're you just said you're you're working on global warming kind of s- stuff yeah. now is that is that what you're oh doing? yeah oh yeah i'm very i'm very yes i'm active in trying to deal with that issue it's a big issue it's a big problem yeah i i i, I have lots of i mean you know scary stuff there for sure in some regards but i really appreciate you allowing us uh dr spickler to uh, tap into your your exquisite knowledge about a an area that not a lot of people I think think about pun intended. See how I did that? There you, you go. That. <laughs> That's right. Yeah, and, uh-huh. and, and know about and 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 it's 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 really been genuinely fun. Yeah, to I've had fun. Take it around and, right. and create with you a little bit tonight. So yes. thank you, sir, very much. Very for good. That. Appreciate being here, Craig. You want to? Uh, you ready to take us out? Yeah, man. We'll do it. All right, here we go. Take us out of here, and uh, we'll, we'll, maybe we'll have to drag you back to the show sometime, if you're willing. Well, when, yeah, when you have some we'll, other questions or you want to put, give me a hard time, why do that? Shoot, man, we got many of them. <laughs> Craig, let's get out of here, and we'll see you guys soon. We're... Okay, here we are.
We on are the, here. On the other other end. On the other side. Yeah. So, Normally we record side. all of the show with the person on the phone, but this time we just talked to Dr. Spickler and we've recorded the in and outs, if you will. Separate stuff together with crazy schedules, man. What'd you think? There's that was a, a big spider in the studio. Check it out. Oh my gosh, there is. Wow. I'm uh-huh. sure they really care about that because they just got their <laughs> minds blown by an amazing conversation uh, with Dr. Ted Spickler. We really are appreciative of you, and uh, I want to direct our audience. Um, boy, that spider is menacing. Anyway, um, Amazon.com. That guy was very nice to come. Uh, Craig's going to kill this spider with his shoe. Wow, if he can catch it. Dead. So that's exciting. Amazon.com. Uh, Dr. Ted Spickler, you will love his book. Give us the name again. Uh, gaining knowledge, uh, gaining insight through tacit knowledge. Yeah, yeah, and uh, I really highlight you checking it out because it, I, you know, in reading it and checking it out myself, I mean, it, it it feels like a pretty meaty topic. But he was kind of joking. I think he was serious, really, in there when he said, you know, listen, um, this is an easy to read book, and he he really, I mean, you, you you just heard how he talked about it. Yeah, and I'll put a link to it too. Our website's been down, but by the time this show publishes, I. Should be caught up on all the blog entries. Yeah, apologize for the technical difficulties. We needed his son, Adrian, to help us out with the website down, and he killed it for he us. He did. He did Absolutely. seriously help us bring the site back up. Big time. Yeah. So uh, what do you think? Any, any summary points? I'll tell you where we're going next. Uh, yeah, let's hear where we're going next. I don't have any, any summary points, man. Yeah, that was an exciting one. I, that, honestly, guys, that's one I'll listen to. It was good. Probably a couple few more times. It was times. fascinating. Fascinating stuff. All right, we are going to go with... Um, a follow-up to this one, I think, is, is, is problem-solving. Yeah. Well, what a neat sort of playoff of this, I thought. And, and, you know, so you're learning and understanding things, that's if you good. think about it. Yeah, we use tacit knowledge we to use... problem-solve, so that's yeah. perfect. Now, you've heard of problem-solving skills and problem-solving strategies. Everyone may likely have heard of things like that before, but what I wanted to do through that show coming up next time is, is, is sort of sprinkle in this tacit knowledge stuff and sort of think about out loud with you how how all of this stuff applies to something that we all do. Problem solving. Yeah. Okay. See you next week. Sounds good. Let me, uh, let me mention, well, I'm just going to mention, um, we've been talking about this new way to support the show. So Chris and I have kind of partnered with a supplement company. There's a hundred and, what I say, 116, 126. Seriously, a lot, yeah. Different products on the website. CBD oils, natural hormone creams, anti-aging, nutritional supplements. Do they have just regular moisturizing creams and basic things that women I do use? I believe they seriously? do. We may start highlighting a product. You know, right. Every like, week. Yeah, yeah. That's probably a good idea. But they do have some, I believe they do have some moisturizing creams. Obviously, I'm not as up to speed on all those 116 products as I should be, but... Tell me you don't use moisturizing cream, Craig. I do not. Okay, I, good. I I'm proud. I do not. But any, I do use any, CBD oil. Any hair and they, gel and stuff? And they have um, several different options. They have oil and they have roll-ons, you know. Uh, you can use CBD for pulled muscles and, and external pain and those kind of things. So they've got a lot of stuff, man. There's a lot of good products out there. And the way you help us out is you go to therapistize.com and I've got a little graphic on there. Whole family products. If you click on that and then purchase, then Chris and I will share in the revenue and uh, we can promote our podcast and do some cool stuff that we want to do um, with the monies that we, that we make that way. Yeah, we'd like to get a little bit of money. It's weird to talk about that, but we do need some help to support the show. And the donation button's right above it or below it or something, too. Yeah, there's a donate button on you know, there, which we help. would certainly appreciate, too. But why not get something while you're at Absolutely. it? Absolutely. Something of value, you know, and help us out at the same time. You, you didn't answer me if you used hair creams. I do use hair gel. I won't, mm-hmm. I'm not sure what kind of hair creams on you're talking about. I don't think they have that. I don't know anything about creams and yeah. sauces and juices yeah. and stuff, they to be honest with you. a lot of good stuff. You. Go check them out. Um, also, too, guys, we got blog entries for every show. You can stream the shows right from the website, or you can find us on just about any podcast platform. And if you're listening that way, we'd appreciate a five-star review and uh, a subscription. And that will help others find our show when they search for mental health and emotional health and the things we talk about on here, which would be awesome. Uh, there's also links to our Facebook and Instagram. And we also have a new, uh, an email newsletter sign up out there, too. Love to keep in touch with you that way. And I think that pretty much covers it, Chris. So. Appreciate it, man. If you have anything else, we'll talk about problem solving soon. I like it.